and welcome to Catacrisp Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.catacrisp.com. My name is Jason J. Rock Houston, and it's my um, honor to welcome to the show once again uh, singer Matt Zane from the band Society One. How are you doing today, Matt? I'm great. How are you? Now, we're talking to you today for a couple of reasons. Um, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Um, first reason is um, your publicist sent me a little press release uh, the fact that you're working on a movie called um, the Shock Rock movie. So, um, talk, talk a little bit about what this is and how you, is this um, project of your own or did somebody hire you to direct the film? The Shock Rock movie project is being put together currently by myself and the drummer, Dag and Destroyer, in the band. Um, and it's a project that we discussed that we decided to go in on together initially. Uh -huh. um, he's also uh, performing on drums for the next tour with Static X and Fear Factory and Dope. Oh, wow. But he's a, film he's a filmmaker as well. And he was around actually a lot about 20 years ago when the band was probably at its height of yeah. popularity in terms of the antics that we were doing. It was when we first did body suspension and a lot of other various things that you can see yeah. and that you'll see unfold in the trailer. So we just kind of decided to join forces on this and, and start a new production company, Singing Crime Media, and kind of go out and uh, create it. Uh, we, we plan to possibly get uh, involved with a larger production company in the future. Okay. But um, right now, it's just us, and we're, we're just creating it right now and just getting the ball rolling to show people that it's real and it's actually getting done and, and it's a legit thing. Because, you know, Matt, the, the thing with that is, I mean, there's a certain beauty to um, it being an independent project. I mean, for one thing, you can kind of have the control and say what you want to do and how it's going to be uh, presented. Of course, if you get a bigger company involved, there's more money, and um, and that means, um, you know, a little more promotion maybe. But it's kind of, um, you know, kind of whatever you want. But uh, people should know that you're um, you're, you're an award-winning director. You, you previously... Um, directed last time i talked to you uh directed the uh, documentary on your former basis um dv karloff which was called um uh, altered noise um i posted that on our facebook page people can kind of check that out so um you've got previous experience doing this you know after doing something like that most people might be think okay maybe his next project will be a documentary on his own band so talk about um how this project progressed and wh why you want to do it on shock rock specifically and other bands that might be you know featured in the documentary i've always been fascinated by the by the more um controversial aspect yeah. of rock music it's something that I've, I've always been obviously enthralled with and it's why i based my own career so much on antics such as uh suspension and the other various things yeah. that, that i've done which you'll see more as we released more footage from the movie uh so it's just something that i finally felt that it was time i mean i'm i'm getting up there a little bit you yeah. know and it just was it just felt that after being in this industry for 25 years and seeing what people have said about shock yeah. rock I, I really felt that a lot of it is kind of fallen short to be completely honest with you i think that uh the shock rock documentary that came out by sam dunn about 10 or 11 or 12 years ago really missed out on a lot of really important aspects and and of it and I, he totally skipped over gg yeah. allen yeah he completely ignored me yeah um and it just and there's been some development since then as well i mean the fact that jane's addiction incorporates suspension into their shows yeah. after uh me uh, introducing it into the rock world and dave navarro fully admitting that that the influence came from what you know what my band and what i did with suspension so it just feels like there should be more of a, a deep dive and a more yeah. definitive uh, movie about it uh in in terms of uh of what it really is and not and not just to leave certain things out because they may be considered a little too con uh, controversial yeah, yeah. especially uh gg allen uh and that's really something that i that i really do want to cover also and make sure that i get that i get within the movie yeah yeah you know um, when i think of shock rock bands uh, probably the, the first ultimate one would have to be you'd have to include because he's kind of a guy that started all um in a way alice cooper um, people think of Kiss, but I don't know if I really, I, I consider it more maybe even a pop band or a hard rock band than shock rock. People will put them in that category because of, you know, the makeup. Yeah, Alice Cooper to me is like number one, numero uno. Yeah. I mean, he's the guy. I mean, and there, there's been a lot of coverage on him in terms of what he's done and giving him uh -huh. the credit that's due. And I, I, I'm a 
we're hopefully going to reach out to his camp and yeah. maybe we can get him involved. I don't really necessarily know what he would say other than yeah. what he's already said. But what we're going to attempt to do in this movie is that we're we're going to try to, to interview some of these people like yeah. Alice Cooper and get their thoughts on some of the lesser discussed aspects of Shock Rock. Again, we want to do a more expansive journey into Shock Rock. We want to know what Alice Cooper thinks about Gigi Allen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I think that's never been done before and that's really something that that i i think needs to have a a a more of a deep dive and has to be a little more involved i think that's going to be very interesting to the viewer yeah and you know um maybe even before alice cooper although um wasn't probably as popular ever as alice was um but you know if you've ever heard of the crazy world of arthur brown i mean i've seen videos and stuff that, that he did kind of some crazy stuff on stage too yeah, I mean, but he's also been covered. I mean, they, they've yeah. talked about how he used to light his head on fire with yeah. the hat on his head and stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and it's cool. And, and, and again, um, he's even been talked about yet where certain aspects of yeah. Shock Rock seem to always be left out. Specifically, again, Gigi Allen as well as myself. Yeah. Which is, which is, again, very curious because of the fact that argumentatively in terms of crowds, I mean... People would always say, oh, well, Society One is left out because you've never sold a million records and you've never played, like, huge shows. And yeah. it really is untrue. I mean, we've done suspensions at the Download Festival in front of 80,000, 90,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's more people in that one day than Gigi Allen ever played in front of us an entire career. I don't necessarily think, though, that's a fair statement. It's just the argument that I'm making is to why we shouldn't be excluded as to when these conversations are happening. So this movie is about that as well as also including people like like Gigi where he he's been ignored yeah I mean I, I dare say because I think um, last time when I interviewed you earlier this year um, we kind of had a discussion about the fact that um, like you yourself have a huge collection of um, you know magazines and, and cover of it your band has been on the cover throughout your career that you save like like any artist would and um, I, I think the thing is um, society one is one of those bands where um, Probably a lot of people um, outside of naming, you know, you the singer Matt Zane, unless they're like a real diehard fan, probably um, can't name all the band members, probably can't name all the um, albums and songs, but but at the same time, they've heard the name Society One. Uh, you know, they, it's like kind of like uh, Tracy Guns used to say um, about LA Guns was the little black dot that everybody loved to um, kind of forget about. Yet somehow, in one form or another, you guys have been around for like over 30 years and you're still you're still around doing it you know yeah you know we are and uh you know we're just one of those bands that for whatever reason just kind of gets left out and left behind and, and forgotten about or not included uh, i think a lot of it has to do with an issue in terms of how the industry really has yeah. just such a disdain and lack of respect for us which is fine i mean it, it is what it is but i will tell you this man i mean on october 7th of this year it's my it was my birthday and i posted a clip of us on tiktok playing uh, at the download festival yeah. and it, and it literally as of right now has one million views so within the last yeah. two months a million people have, have seen my band play I mean, just I've, from one yeah, clip i've always said you know I, I think the fans kind of know something a little more than what the so-called industry experts know you know i mean uh, and your band's a perfect example of that i mean in prepping for today's interview i was looking at some of the clips that you posted on your facebook page and and i think we're talking about this for last time the fact that all these videos you post um you've got so much footage of the band from over the years a mixture of kind of um from modern day just like old stuff from maybe 20 years ago and every time you post something it gets like over a million two two million views i mean um so it's not that you know people don't like what you're doing or fans aren't aware of you. It's just I think the fans might be more aware of a band than you know the so-called industry. Yeah, I mean to, to a certain extent that's true, but to uh, the other the other extent, like there's just so many people that, that don't know about us. Yeah. And whenever we do have an opportunity to be on a platform to reach those people, we always do really well. Like you said, like not everybody has a, a clip yeah, of yeah, them yeah. performing with their band on like a social media site that can get a million hits. And we've done that, and it just again it goes to show you that that we can be relevant and we can get the support of people, and and, and people still are very interested in what we're doing if we have the ability to get out there and actually be seen and that's really the biggest that's the biggest hurdle for everybody these days yeah. but with us it's like when we do have the opportunity it's the numbers prove it 
it's just uh, unfortunately we're constantly battling the industry and we're constantly battling managers and agents and press yeah. and we're also battling the social media companies because we have a tremendous problem with a lot of them and, and how they censor us and constantly ban our accounts and, and suppress the, the feed. I mean, we're on our fourth TikTok account right now, our fourth one. We've been banned three times before this. You know, so it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, but it's just, it just, it is what it is. And we've gotten to the point now where we've just come to accept it. You kind of just have to put horse blinders on yeah. and, move, and move forward regardless of which and just keep doing what you're doing because you know it's cool. Oh, you yeah. know when people finally see it, they're like, wow, this is, this is really interesting. We've never, we, we don't put stuff out and people to go and people say, oh, that's, that's not interesting. And I'm not saying they're going to like it. Yeah. I'm not even, I'm not going to say they're going to hate it. I'm not going to say they're going to love it. I'm not going to say, they, but no matter what we put out, people, if they see it, it always gets gains interest, whether it be a love or a hate or yeah. whatever, whatever the situation may be. Well, well, I can tell you, Matt, even just from looking at your, your Facebook page, I mean, um, Anybody goes on there, they, um, they can look at these clips you have, they can look at any of the photos of you or of a band, and y y everybody in the band looks like a rock star. The, the photos are real flashy, and, and they, they, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I interview a band and I might go on their page to pull some photos, and maybe they've only got one or two photos of a band up, or, and, and it's nothing any really, it's really flashy looking. I'm like, oh my God, these guys, they need some help, like, um, getting some photos or something, but, um, you seem to um, have a real eye for that kind of stuff, and um, I think it. And that's why when um, you know, I, I always got into bands like Society One or you know Wasp or Kiss or Motley Crue. Um, you know, because back in the day, like even Motley Crue, they they um, they would not just entertain you on stage and give you like an ultimate rock show, but um, they would they would all look like rock stars. It's like, yeah, I can get into this. It's not just great music, but it's kind of like eye candy like like that's why when you do go to kiss show and they're you know wearing the makeup and the high heels and whatever and you know uh you know and, and explosions are going off um you know as they're doing rock and roll all night you can really get into that it's like okay i'm getting my money's worth here it, you know these guys are giving me a show it's not just um four guys from the streets of new york you know in their jeans and t-shirts i've always been into rock and roll being extra yeah uh, it's just, it's just my personal preference uh, i know some people aren't necessarily yeah. into that but I, I i've always liked the theatrical aspects and and getting uh, for lack of a better word dressed up for the occasion it seems to always uh seem more special and for me personally yeah. it's more like a preparation to go into the experience into some type of ritual so it's something that, that I've always enjoyed and, and I always try to extend that into yeah. what we do and sometimes we get scheduling issues and some of our videos yeah. and pictures aren't as as great as others but it but normally it is an effort that we try to that we, we put into it because I also am a fan of my own band I kind of yeah. approach it when I'm not singing as, as a fan and what, would I, what I'd like to see well, I mean, I mean, I think that works for you too because um, definitely, like I said, I could um, just going on and looking at the photos and the video clips, I can see the effort that you put in, you and the guys in the band put into um, the band, and I think that's the key for success too. That um, not rather than worrying about okay, um, got to be like every other band, you know, we got to have a you know first song you release got to be a hard rock and song, and then you got to release a power ballad. You know, you're not following any trends. You're creating your own trends. You're doing. Um, like as a singer, you're writing the songs that you like because if you like them, then your fans are going to like them because because they're songs that you're writing and singing from the heart, as opposed to maybe what a guy at the labels tell you. No, no, we need a hit single. We we need something you know more radio friendly. I just uh, I, I agree with you. I, I just enjoy doing what I do, and it's an it's an honest expression, and we don't really have any boundaries or limitations on our creativity, and it's just yeah. uh, it's just very freeing, and, and I just enjoy it. I've just reached the point in my career where you know I'm not 18 or 21 yeah, yeah. anymore, so there's there's going to be no big managers or labels yeah. really interested in trying to get behind me anyway. So why not just do stuff that you enjoy, enjoy that yeah. maybe you want to push the limits a little bit on and express your creativity in ways that you that you haven't before. Yeah. Now, you know, um, I don't know if you, you know who I'm talking Jizzy Pearl's um, a guy that maybe you would not typically think of like a shock rock guy, but did you, um, were you aware of his band Love Hate back in the day? And did you see when he did the um, famous instant on the Hollywood sign where he hung himself? Yeah, I, I know who Love Hate is. I'm yeah. old enough, believe it or not. Yeah. Black Island, the Red Room. Yeah, right? that's it. Yeah. yeah, and I 
actually worked with the original guitar player in that band, um, not on a musical project, yeah. but a video project much later down the, the line, and it was really cool to, to meet him. Um, but I heard vaguely about that, but I, I don't really, I don't really know that much about it. But it's something that I'll definitely have to look into. Yeah, I think you should look at it because uh, he might be. That might be an interesting story if you can get him to agree to take part in your film. Because I think you might even be able to see like a news clip about it on um, YouTube if you go searching for it. <laughs> But, yeah, that was a great song too. That was a really, really cool song. Yeah, and and you know, um, it's just um, interesting. You know, that that's a guy that's had a career like um, he's currently in Quiet Ride and he's doing that and he uh, puts out solo music from time to time. But um, you know, um, you know, when you got that kind of talent, I mean, uh, you know, uh, more power to you. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's really, really, really cool. I'm glad that he's got another gig now, and he's he's out there. He's got a really cool voice, so I'm totally for it. Yeah, and you know, um, another band that, um, again, probably you put right up there with um, you know Alice Cooper, but more of an eighty um, from the eighties. Um, Wasp. Now, Wasp is um, they're getting a little more attention these days because they're currently on a fortieth anniversary tour. But it's like the first tour they've done here in the U.S. like in over ten years. Now, if you go back to the heyday of Wasp. And you remember what they were doing, throwing out raw meat. I mean, that was really kind of um, shocking back around 1984. Yeah, you know, again, Wasp, a great band and a great example of a certain aspects of shock rock with the with the crotch pieces, with the saws and throwing out yeah. the raw meat and the, um, you know, getting their albums, you know, with the warning labels and all that. And again, I take absolutely nothing away from them, and, but yeah. they've also been recognized yeah, yeah. and put in every single one of these these documentaries. Again, I would love to interview Black, Blackie to get his thoughts on this, but also to delve into a little deeper in terms of some shock rock uh, that hasn't been talked about, and, and you know, and again, other aspects of the shock rock thing that we're that we plan on touching upon in the movie is is things that people wouldn't necessarily even consider shock rock yeah. because they just kind of looked over them. Like so, for example, in the '90s, obviously there was Marilyn Manson. Yeah, sure. But there was an, there was another aspect in the '90s where Dave Navarro was making out with the Red Hot Chili Peppers in their music video, and he was walking the runway with like girls' slips on, and that was very shocking at the time. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, this is before the whole trans movement and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. homosexuality sexuality was more accepted yeah. i mean this was an incredibly shocking thing that was a real counterpoint to what manson was doing and you know that's again never been really discussed that much before in shock rock documentaries so it's again we're looking to get into a little more of the darker corners that haven't been discussed as much and uh, bring it a little more to light to really provide hopefully a more expansive view and not tell the same story that's been told dozens of times yeah i think as a filmmaker that's that's obviously what you want to do because it, it's it's going to um, drive people to um see the film now when um when the film is um ready to be released um you think you'll do like the previous film where you're just going to release it online or are you going to wait and see where you are when the time comes well we have a lot of prep still and a lot of shooting to do for this movie yeah. i mean we're bringing the camera crew out on the road with us when we go out and tour with Dag and destroyer and society one next year uh with static x fear factory and dope we're bringing a camera crew out with us to cover that that's gonna also be involved in the movie because the movie's not only about shock rock but it's about how a shock rock band is accepted into today's political mm -hmm. climate versus where we were 20 years ago so there's this constant push and pull within the story where we're showing most moments from 20 years ago versus showing what the tour looks like now so we've got to get that shot then we have to go back into editing and uh then we have a big surprise for the ending of the movie that we have to shoot after the tour so it's a little bit down the line we're going to yeah. be shooting pretty much all throughout 2023 so i don't think it's going to be just a quick thing that we yeah, put yeah, up. yeah. Uh, i think we're definitely going to do premieres and some some touring behind it and some movie showcases and oh, theaters cool. so there, there's a lot of there's a lot more involved there's a, this is going to be a very long process we just decided to keep everybody involved in every step of the way because we thought it would be really interesting for people to see how it unfolds yeah, well as they say good things come to those who wait now um you know I, I dare say that there were a lot more um shock rock bands back in the day but um uh, have you found that there's still some new ones kind of cropping up that people just aren't aware of there's been some things that have happened. I mean, there was a band that I can't remember the name of, and I wish I could because it's not really a rock band, yeah. but it had a, one of the girl singers from American Idol. Okay. And they were on stage, and she actually urinated in a guy's mouth. Oh, wow. And ah. uh, it was during a Rage Against the Machine cover, where they, which the band is primarily horns. Okay. And, you know, and I forget what, what it was, but it actually made TMZ, and I'll Google it and find yeah, it, but yeah. that was probably the most shocking thing that I've seen as of late, and it wasn't even done by somebody within the, in the rock industry which is kind of disappointing yeah yeah, yeah. 
yeah. uh, you know, because I thought, like, I don't think that right now, like, people are just so afraid of um, doing Defending. anything because of, yeah. of the political correctness. I mean, and rightly so. I mean, they're they're after Manson right now, and he's come out in the last couple yeah. weeks ex- basically saying that his career is completely ruined, you know, uh, because of obviously the allegations. Yeah, yeah. But par- partially because I believe that, that people uh, believe these allegations, whether or not they're true, because of his stage persona yeah. and what he's done yeah. in terms of shock rock and so it's really kind of blown back on him and and his uh, debilitated his ability to actually have uh, make a living yeah so I, I think a lot of bands are following suit and trying to be a little more kid friendly these days yeah yeah, uh, yeah so i don't necessarily know how much how much there is out there i've caught things here and there but um there's there's not a lot i, I truly believe when we go out next yeah. year i mean we're not going to go to the extent that we were 20 years ago yeah. but i think even in some of the aspects of what we're going to do is is people just haven't seen in you know 10 15 years i mean you know back in the day like you both go back to 1973 when kiss was uh, just getting launched i mean um you know, Gene Simmons, um, Breathing Fire, I mean, that was shocking back in the day. He was like one of the first people to ever do that. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, it, again, he wasn't the first guy to do fire, like but, the guy yeah. that set his head on fire, but yeah. I mean, he was the guy that first got to breathe fire, and it was that's part of it. And I would love to get somebody like John Five, who, who obviously I've worked yeah. with, and I yeah. know, and I haven't sent them a message yet, but to talk about that and talk about what it was like as a kid to see Kiss and how shocking it was. I don't want to exclude any of these yeah. people that were obviously the, you know, impetus for all yeah. of this, because um, uh, I love them and a, and a fan as well. But again, I'm I'm looking to include uh, people yeah. that haven't been included and also get the thoughts about those people from the grandfathers of, of Shock Rock. Now, since um, you put the word out about the film, have you, have you like, had anybody contacting, like, uh, that they want to uh, be part of the film? Or um, how are you going about, you know, finding who's going to be in the film? you just, like, going online and researching bands and things like well, that? I- yeah, we, we just announced it. Yeah. Uh, it just got announced, like, oh. today. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, yeah, like, the... the um, and then, originally, it, it got leaked on Friday, but it was the day after Thanksgiving, so it didn't yeah, yeah. get a lot of heat. But now, people are really starting to pick up on it, and we're resending the press release from, like, Pack Publicity tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, we'll see who contacts us, but uh, basically, we have a full five-minute sizzle reel that's not available to the public right yeah. now that we're going to be sending to people within the industry to see who wants to get involved. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll see what happens over the next couple of couple of weeks, and I'm sure that uh, you know uh, uh, we'll we'll get it. And as we do, we're going to completely promote it. We're going to say, hey, we got this person, we're yeah. filming this person, we're that. We're keeping people involved 100 percent of the steps because we just thought it would be an interesting process to, to see unfold online. Yeah, I should tell people that um, you you got a you got a website up shockrockmovie.com. I went up there today and signed up for the mailing list, I guess, which is where people do that they'll get like um, updates on on the film. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously we're going to send out updates and we're going to uh, constantly, every month, just be, I mean, we're not going to be posting every day because no, no, I mean, there, yeah. there's, there, there's a lot of work involved yeah, of and you know, we also have the band thing and the tours and all that, but um, yeah, we're going to definitely post, you know, uh, five, ten times a month. Um, we're gonna, we'll send out, you know, releases whenever there's a new uh, sizzle reel or something, um, but yeah, yeah, we're, we're just going to just put as much stuff as we as, as we can as, as it goes but then, like i said this is going to be a, a whole like 12 to 14 month process oh sure so it's just going to be something that we hope people just kind of find over time and just kind of check back in with until we get picked up hopefully by that larger production company so it really has an opportunity to be seen by as many people as possible yeah i, I mean i um just when i heard about it I, I i got excited i mean this sounds like definitely a movie i would want to go you know uh, uh, watch and i think there are other rock fans that that would you know and um just to kind of you know your your co-director i seen, seen a clip he put online and i think he was talking about the fact that you guys got four mo- uh, 14 months of shooting like you're saying and you got 20 years of footage i mean last time you talked you're telling me you have videos from like way back in the day and some of the stuff you just are having to transfer over to like dvd and do, do that process so um like how much of a, a film once it's done do you think will be like class some of this classic old footage versus the newer footage i don't really know i know that we're dipping into it obviously because that's part of really what the movie's about yeah. and the most shocking the band ever was was you know 15 16 17 18 19 20 years ago so we are definitely going to be showing like bouncing back between present moment mm-hmm. as well as 20 years ago as well as having the interviews about all of it yeah. 
I just don't know what the balance is going to be. The movie's too much in, in terms of its infancy right yeah. now. Um, and again, we just released the first teaser, 40 Seconds, which yeah. already had a clip, an unreleased, unseen yeah. clip of Wayne Static in it. And, uh, you know, so again, it also had some of the download footage in it, which was from 2005. Mm-hmm. And then it had new footage in it, which were part of the interviews. So, you know, it just we're just going to have to see how it unfolds. We just, you know, the movie's being made as, as we talk, and yeah. it's going to be made over the next six, oh, seven, wow. eight months. Well, you know, you know, Matt. I mean, I think you know, um, Kiss. Obviously, they're one band that, um, like you guys, have a ton of video footage that they're constantly, you know, putting stuff out there. But um, not a lot of bands in the '70s or even the '80s, because you know, technology was still new and everything. Even thought to um, videotape or save that stuff. I mean, um, um, that kind of shows. You know, you, you were a little ahead of your time. You know, just having the um, where it fall to shoot all this footage and knowing, hey, I'm going to keep this and we're going to use it for one day down the line. <laughs> I just knew that something unique was happening, yeah. and I wish that I would have I would have filmed more, quite honestly. And it's just it's really upsetting because I have memories of certain things, and yeah. Dagen has memories of certain things that that nobody would ever believe us unless they saw it. And it's unfortunate because the fact of the matter is is that when Alice Cooper tells the story about him meeting Elvis and Elvis, you know, disarming yeah. a gun from him yeah. um, that was loaded, people believe it because it's Alice Cooper. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not doubting his sincerity yeah, whatsoever yeah. because it's Alice Cooper. But the problem. Is, is I'm not Alice Cooper so I tell my stories and people say no that didn't happen because you're only Matt Zane so unfortunately I can only rely upon the stories that I actually have some proof of yeah I think you told me a similar story the last time I talked to you a few months back you were saying something about your girlfriend at the, um, um, that she didn't know about the band like existed before the internet or something like that <laughs> Yeah, you know, she's 17 years yeah. younger than I am, so, you know, she thought when she met me that a lot of the stuff that I said was just, I was just being delusional. She actually thought I was delusional. She still dated me for that first year yeah, because yeah. of that, but, yeah. but um, it wasn't until she started to see a lot of the archives manifest and be posted and interviews come in and so on and so forth that she realized that oh, Ella yeah. really was true, yeah. and that's, that's an unfortunate aspect of being me, that some of those things are never going to be recreated. And maybe if I ever get a little more famous again, people yeah. will believe the stories. But uh, it just it hasn't happened yet. So yeah. as of now, we have to rely on the footage that yeah. we have. And I, I don't know if, I, if I've ever asked you. Um, you're also known as Lord Zane. I'm, I'm assuming uh, somebody gave you that um, name. How did that come about? I, I mean, Lord is just like, yeah. just means master. Yeah, know? yeah, Ma- okay. Master Zane, you know, yeah. master. You know, master of your own yeah, domain. Yeah, yeah. I don't really know how that. How, I remember how that came about, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, I, I don't really think it's that big of a deal because it, it's like yeah. you can actually become a lord, a real lord, yeah. by like the internet these days. You can go, you know, something over in, in Ireland or something, something that you pay, and you become, a, you can become an actual lord. Yeah, yeah. But but uh, yeah, you know, I, I've always I've always liked it. Well, the name uh, stuck, so you know, people must like it. So that's that's, that's a good thing, I guess. Um, yeah. And then um, you mentioned the tour coming up next year, and I, I believe it's called um, the Rise of the Rise of the Machine Tour. So, talk a little bit about the tour. I mean, you mentioned some of these other bands. I, I know these are bands that are friends of yours that you've toured with before. But talk about putting this together. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just Static X doing a 20th anniversary of the of uh, the Machine album, okay. and it's called Rise of the Machines, and uh, it's got, of course, all of the original members of Static X, except for Wayne, mm-hmm. and they brought out uh, Fear Factory with them, uh, which is just, you know, amazing to have these two great industrial bands doing this tour, and we got lucky enough to get a month of dates on, on with them, and it starts, I believe, February 22nd, I think, or 23rd. Oh, okay. And uh, we're doing a couple of dates before that, a couple of dates after our stint with them. But the primary bulk of it is is uh, on that tour, and it's our 20th anniversary of the Exit Through Fear album, which is our biggest album. So we'll be playing a lot of songs from that album. And again, Dag and Destroyers come back 20 years later yeah. to play drums, uh, and it's uh, it's exciting. I mean, we're all really excited about it. Plus, we have this movie that's being shot at the same time. Uh, I mean, so yeah. yeah, there's just so much going on. It's just it's it's kind of crazy to think that at this age uh, that uh, this so much is still happening and we're and we're still doing this and I know people always say oh well you know Kiss is this age and yeah, this yeah. band's this age but my point is this is that yeah absolutely but that's Kiss the mere fact that it's society one and here we are 25 years later yeah. and we're still doing sizable tours and sizable yeah, yeah. rooms getting
getting press, making movies, getting millions of hits on, on social media. It's, it's, uh, it's really uh, amazing. So it's just, it feels like an amazing place to be in, and we're all just really, really excited about it. I mean, it's, all it's, it. it's, all, it's, it's all about perspective. And what I mean by that is, um, I, I dare kind of agree with you, Matt, is that it's the fact, um, not that you were here 25 years ago, but that, that you're still here, you're still doing There, there are some bands that have packed it up and for whatever reason are not doing it anymore. So the fact that you still got the fan base you do, you're constantly getting new fans, I mean, I, I think that says it right there. Yeah, I mean, I'm incredibly grateful. I, I've lived a very blessed life in some ways. Yeah. And again, I, I can't believe it. I, I wake up and, and I, I look at my age and I go, oh my God, like, I, I can't believe I'm still here. at this <laughs> point that I'm still doing this and doing it in front of people. I mean, I'm not talking yeah. like, you know, some of these rooms are five, six, seven, a thousand, fifteen hundred people. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, it's it's amazing. And, and, the, and on top of that, like, we're, we're doing a movie you know? yeah yeah so it's just it's, it's just crazy and so um have you have you um worked been much of a director before of a um the alter noise um film because i, I was reading some that you're an award-winning um director and i was just wanted to ask you a little bit about that yeah i mean my first movie I ever did the documentary was called it's got a long title it was called contrasting views of people living within an artistic lifestyle okay. i don't think that it's available anymore yeah. that was my first documentary that i ever did it was kind of like a documentary slash art film yeah and i really need to get it transferred and uploaded um so i, I obviously did that and then a lot of the times what people are referring to is my my music videos in oh, terms okay. of directing so okay. i've been you know i've directed over 200 200 oh, wow. music videos oh, you're quite experienced with that yeah <laughs> yeah and i've worked i directed videos for zach wilde i've directed videos for dope for static yeah. x for dmc run dmc wayne static um, um motor grader pretty boy floyd oh motor grader uh, yeah oh that's another I've, one yeah uh directed with john yeah. five five music videos for john oh, five wow. uh, music videos for um i can't even that's remember quite the, really that's quite the list of credentials right there yeah, you know wednesday 13 i did like three uh, music videos for wednesday 13 i did um nope. yeah, just, just a bunch of people i've worked with uh Oh, wow. The guy from El Nino. I worked with yeah. the guy from Head PE. The lead singer from Head PE. Uh, the, the list goes on and on and on. So I did a ton of music videos, and uh, I think that's what a lot of people refer to when they talk about my directing. It wasn't. Uh, this is only my third movie yeah. that I've done. My third documentary oh, that, that I've worked uh, yeah. on. Wow. But um, yeah, you know, it's primarily music videos, commercials, EPKs. quality, quality stuff. Because even the, the even the um, Alter Noise one I was watching, it, it just just a great piece of work on your on your fallen bandmate and you know um you mentioned there um wednesday 13 now um he, if you could get him that'd be great to include him i only say that because i don't know if you consider him um mainstream i mean you know maybe he's a little more popular than some of those other bands we were mentioning but i, I um i don't know but he's broke out like in a huge way let's say like an alice cooper though yeah i think wednesday 13 is great i think he's got a great show yeah. um you know, with him, it's just like, though, it's it's not, it's because he's more in the vein of an Alice Cooper. Yeah. Alice Cooper is no longer considered really shocking anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he's not considered shocking. In the context of when Alice Cooper came out, he was the devil. Okay, so, yeah. I mean, he, he really is the, the godfather of, of shock oh, rock. Sure. The thing with Wednesday is is that um, he follows very closely within that vein, and it's it's more theatrical versus really shock rock. So I don't necessarily know okay. how he fit into it. Uh, but maybe, uh, you know... I would, I would still love to have him involved uh, yeah. to get his thoughts yeah. on why he has fashioned his show off of somebody like like an Alice Cooper or, and his thoughts about shock rock in general. Well, I mean, like we mentioned Kiss a few times, and you know, Kiss is another band I heard Paul Stanley talk about when they first got together, they actually went to see Alice Cooper. Yes. And, and their, yeah. thing, their thing was, um, okay, that's pretty cool what, what he's doing, but it's only one guy in the band that's getting dressed up. We want to take it to the extreme, and each guy has their own individual personality. I think that's the first time any band kind of really took that to, you know, that extreme. I believe the story is, is they all went to Madison Square Garden. They all went in the front row to see Alice Cooper. Yeah. And I remember them after saying, after they saw Alice Cooper, they said, if one, something along the lines of, if one Alice Cooper is great, what about four Alice Coopers? Yeah, yeah. 
and and that's how they decided to then get their personas to to begin doing what they were doing. So again, I mean, Alice Cooper again above even Kiss. Yeah, Kiss. <laughs> I mean, like he was playing Madison Square Garden when yeah. they were fans yeah. in, in the in the front row. Which again, Alice Cooper to me is just. I mean, he's yeah, huge, huge time. I'm a ma- massive, massive, massive yeah. fan. I've covered Alice Cooper's music. It's not a, not known, but I did a cover of stra- uh, uh, um, uh, a couple of his songs. Yeah, I, I'd love to. I'd love to interview you again down the line, mate, uh, Matt, specifically about um, maybe talking about some of the Alice Cooper albums because, like, for example, um, I don't know if you're just as we're sitting here thinking about it. Um, School's Out turns 50 years old this year, if you can believe that. Yeah, I can believe it. Yeah, but yeah, classic, amazing albums. I mean, I'm a fan of all those yeah. uh, billion dollar babies. Welcome to my nightmare. Schools out, like all those those first albums. And yeah, Alice Cooper, man. I mean, he's just he's a legend beyond the legend because beyond the shock rock thing, yeah. the guy used to hang out with Jim Morrison and and, oh. and open for the doors. Yeah, he, you know, Frank Zappa signed him for his first. Yeah, two did albums. you ever hear that story? How he 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 showed up at Frank Zappa's like house like six a.m. when he meant six p.m. No, yeah, for yeah exactly. okay. I mean that yeah. that's and then you know um I, I don't know if you're aware but like um Love It to Death people really kind of think of that as the real first Alice Cooper album because you listen to the two albums before which I think is like Pretties for You and I forget what the other one is um they almost sound like psychedelic sounds nothing like um Alice Cooper Bob Ezrin's really the one that gave um, Alice Cooper his sound yeah, those first two albums were like totally different, and you know, Al- Alice will talk about when yeah. he was opening for the doors, they'd like clear the place out. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were so crazy and so bizarre. So yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just he's just amazing. I mean, I haven't met him yet. I've I've actually worked for his with his daughter. I've shot his daughter, oh. um, Callie, in a Wednesday Thirteen music video. Um, so I've I've got to ultimately get uh, meet up with him at some point. Um, but yeah, it's somebody that I would definitely love to interview for the movie as well as just discuss things with because guy is just uh, I've just been a hero for for so many years. Yeah, you, you were talking about how Win- Wednesday 13 was obviously influenced by Alice Cooper. Um, it kind of reminds me, I was, um, like last year, I, I got a chance to interview um, Mark Stein, the singer and the keyboard player from uh, Vanilla Fudge. And he was telling me that um, that John Lord from Deep Purple actually told him, hey, hey Mark, you, you influenced me to, to, to do what I'm doing in Deep Purple. I mean, just, just think about that for a minute, you know? Yeah, it's crazy, man. I mean, it's just, it's... Uh it's amazing how far it reaches back. Yeah, and um, I guess the last thing I should ask you before I let you go is you mentioned um, kind of how you, you do your suspension thing. How did that get started? And um, tell little people kind of what, what what you do there. The suspension, again, was just the logical evolution of shock rock. Uh, prior to me suspending in, in the Nothing music video and then performing live suspended, it had never been done in rock history before. And I had always fat- fantasized about doing something beyond anything that had ever been done. But by the time I finally came on the scene in the early 2000s, late 90s, there wasn't a lot left that could be done at that point. And that's why people thought that shock rock really was over. It just it had reached its logical conclusion. And I happened to see a guy named Joey Strange do it. Uh, he was on Ripley's Believe It or Not. He was suspended from a helicopter. He was a very renowned performance artist back in the day and I befriended him and started discussing the possibilities of it and nobody even knew if it would be possible to sing while uh-huh. suspended Okay. And, and I just thought you know this is going to be my claim to fame and this is going to push Shock Rock to that next level and it absolutely did and it's amazing that a lot of people still are unaware of it and that's also part, partially why we're making the movie to really let people know that you know Shock Rock didn't end after Marilyn Manson yeah. it went one step further because everybody thought that he was really the last the last piece of it and he wasn't there was one more piece and it was it was mad zane it was society one and so like we, um when you do something like that you obviously um before you perform it on stage you you, you got to learn you got to learn to do it safely and everything so what was that process like and how long did it take you to get to the point where you felt like okay i'm at the point where i can master this and i can do this on stage well, no, nobody, that point never happened until the night that we did it because oh, wow. nobody ever thought it was possible. Wow. Because it had never been done before. Wow. People suspended, but when we talked about that people actually singing, everybody was like, is this going to be possible? Is there going to be, a, are you going to be able to get enough air into the rib cage? Are you going to be able to sing on key while also enduring the pain? Is your body going to go into shock because uh, yeah. of the exertion? There was all these questions and no, nobody knew if it was possible wow. and there was no preparation. There was a crew that that knew what they were doing and uh, called core that was just that, in case that handled a lot yeah. of the technical aspects yeah. of it but 
But as far as it knowing, like pre preparing, there was nothing to base it after. If anybody ever attempts it now, yeah. they can go, okay, well, we know it can be done. There was a guy that did it. But yeah. up until me, there was just one big question mark. And it was at that time, like when you, um, you know, the, the night you did it um, for the first time, is there a little bit of a fear factor not knowing what's going to happen? Or is that part of the fun for you? No, I mean, there was a lot of fear. There was fear on all the initial suspensions because every single time we upped the ante. The first time was just for a music yeah. video. The second time was three songs in front of a sold-out crowd with Jay Gordon from Orgy sitting in on the last song. And then the third time was in front of 80,000 people at the Download Festival with singing an entire set with only four hooks. Oh, wow. So there was, there was always fear in, in all of it. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, absolutely that it's also part of the fun. And 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 then as part of a, a an artist, I guess that enjoys shocking the um, the fans or his audience, um, like y you've done that. So that's kind of uh, what you've become known for. But um, like when you hit the stage again, do you, you ever think, okay, I've done that, so we gotta we gotta do something to top that. I mean, or is there any of that going on? Like w when you're getting ready to go on this tour? Uh, you know, I, I'm at a point now where um, just being able if to I do were e even to do what I've already done. Yeah. I, it, I've all, I would be canceled and in jail and in front of lawyers. I got you. So okay. as, as far as like doing more, yeah. um, I haven't really thought about it because really right now I'm at the point in my career where I'm just trying to let people know what I've already done. Because again, like we discussed at the beginning yeah. of the interview, I was kind of left behind in a lot yeah. of these documentaries. So right now it's just it's it's probably more about just getting the recognition in terms of what we've already accomplished and what we've done. And yeah. I don't know, we'll see what happens that, down the line. But again, you got to remember my, my age. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's, I don't really necessarily know how much uh, more you can how take. my body's going to yeah, do yeah. When, we, when we bring some of this stuff back. Because, you know, uh, it kind of reminds me, like, you know, um, again, Molly Crew's another one of those bands. I'm Tommy Lee, very uh, revolutionary drummer. I mean, um, back in the day, it was, a, it was a big deal. The very first time, like, he, he um, did his thing where he's drumming upside down. And then yeah. he took it to the next level, like, I think on the last tour. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a roller coaster. I'm going to up what I did before, you know. And so that's kind of also what you're talking about, kind of the very kind of um, aspect of, of these shock rock bands that, that were very um, big back in the day. And so... A uh, very final question, Matt, for you. Um, I know that the most recent album came out like just before um, COVID, and you're going to be doing this tour and working on the movie. But in between that time, have you even thought about um, starting, um, you know, the next album or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, we already started it. We were in the studio uh, a couple weeks ago, actually. Uh, big press release, you probably missed it. We actually got a hold of Danny Carey's snare drum that he used on the Undertow album okay. from Tool. Oh, wow. And uh, Dagging Destroyer came into, into the studio with us, and uh, we're actually going to be going to Chris Collier to mix some of these songs that we're going to get out prior to the tour. So we're going to have some new videos and some new music oh, wow. uh, in January. So really only got to wait about, about six, seven weeks before before a new video comes out, then another one will come out in February. Then we'll be doing the tour starting February 23rd. Wow, we look we look forward to that. And um, as you can tell, Matt, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of what you do. And so um, uh, let, let's definitely keep in touch. And when some of that stuff's released in January, I'd love to talk to you again. And um, I do anything we can to help you um, get the word out about the movie and anything you want to do to promote, to promote it. Um, we're here for you. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Okay, you take care, my friend, and, and have a very merry uh, Christmas and rest of the year. And you too. Take care. Bye bye. Chaotic Grips Magazine.